Hi everyone, this is Maggie from Esri Canada's technology adoption team back again to help you with your transition into ArcGIS Pro 3.0. In today's video, we'll be looking at a new tool that was added with the software update called the Multi-Scale Geographically Weighted Regression Analysis or MGWR tool. Before we jump into ArcGIS Pro, let's do a quick refresher about regression analysis. The first thing we need to know is what is regression analysis? It's a set of statistical methods used to estimate relationships between a dependent variable and one or more explanatory variables. What this means is it can take the data that you provide and help you to understand if there is a relationship between the variables included in your data set, and if there is a relationship, what type that is. It can't tell you if one variable causes a change in another, but it can show you if there's a relationship between trends in changing variables in your data set. Because we're working with ArcGIS Pro, we know geography has to be involved. And so that is where the geographically weighted regression comes into play. Geographically weighted regression, or GWR, is a form of linear regression used to model the relationships that vary across space. By bringing geography into your analysis, you can start to look at more complex questions, such as the relationship between education level and income and seeing if it's consistent across an entire community, or looking at diseases, seeing if there's a higher prevalence of diseases with proximity to certain features like bodies of water. Overall, just enhancing your analysis. So we know that GWR brings space into your regression analysis, but how is the MGWR different? While the GWR allows coefficients to vary spatially, all coefficients must change at a similar rate across the study area. The MGWR is an evolved form of this analysis, which allows for different neighborhood sizes for each of your coefficients for each individual variable. This means in the same analysis, you can have one variable that would be considered global and doesn't vary across the space, another that's local, and others that are somewhere in between, giving you a better picture of the data overall and often providing a more accurate result. These are complex processes, and for more information, I recommend that you take a look at the documentation by Esri that goes over how these analyses are performed and gives you a little bit more detail on the differences between the two. For now, let's go ahead and see this tool at work in ArcGIS Pro. Okay, so here we are inside of ArcGIS Pro 3.0, looking at a project that I have with the city of Montreal. On the map here, we can see the different neighborhoods in the city, and we're seeing the rate of deaths caused by heat-related illnesses this summer displayed on the map. The darker colors are where there's been higher number of deaths, and the lighter colors where there's been lower numbers. We're going to use the MGWR tool to get an idea of how some demographic data that I've been provided with relates to the rates that we're seeing throughout the communities. This can help us when making decisions in the community, such as where to add cooling locations or to add more outreach in response to the extreme heat events, when we understand if there's a relationship between these death rates and the demographic information that we have available, then we can better target our resources. Let's take a quick look at the data that we have in our features so we can understand which variables are available to us. With data engineering, we can just take a quick look at all the information that we have. We can see that we have the deaths due to heat related illness, which we see on the map. And then we also have some information like the population over 85 years, uh, population living alone, green space coverage, and population unemployed. Uh, here you can get more information if you want to see the max and min values, the distribution of the data, all that's available in data engineering. But just to get an idea, these are going to be the values that we're looking at to get a better understanding of the relationship between these features and deaths due to heat related illness. So let's get the MGWR tool opened up and we're going to set our input feature to our neighborhoods. Our dependent variable is the, the heat related illness deaths. And then our four explanatory variables, the ones we just looked at, our population 85 and older, population living alone, green space coverage, and unemployment. We're gonna go ahead and scale the data so we can directly compare our results. And I will set my neighborhood type to number of neighbors. 
and the golden search. This is just what works best for my data, but if you want to get some more information on that, you can go ahead and review the documentation to see what will work best for you. Let's go run the tool. As you can see, a number of layers are added to the map once the tool is finished running, and we're going to take a look at all of those in a moment, but let's start by looking at the messaging that we see. The MDWR has a lot of information in the messaging, and it's important to review this because it's going to tell you a lot about the results that are on your map and help you understand what's happening within your model. The summary statistics for coefficient estimates section summarizes the mean, standard deviation, minimum, median, and maximum for each of the coefficient estimates across the study area. The mean value of each coefficient reflects the association between that explanatory variable and the dependent variable. The standard deviation indicates the spatial variation of each explanatory variable. A small standard deviation implies a good OLS fit. We can see that 80, the population 85 and older has a high positive value for the mean, indicating a strong positive relationship with the dependent variable. The standard deviation is very low, so there is low spatial variability. Because we had the scale data parameter checked on, we can compare these values across our different variables and can see that age has a stronger relationship than single households, for example. Model diagnostics is the next section you can see, and this is a detailed message that summarizes the model's fits. In this model diagnostics section, we can see that the MGWR outperforms the GWR. This is indicated by the higher R squared value with the MGWR, as well as the lower AIC value. Neither of these models are a perfect fit for our data, so there's probably some adjustments that could be made to the features that are included in the analysis, but from what we have available, we can see that the MGWR is preferred over the GWR. The summary of explanatory variables and neighborhoods section explains the, what the bandwidth for each variable is. The GWR uses 47 neighborhoods for e all variables. We can see that listed up here. The optimal GWR bandwidth was 47 for every single variable, which means it's comparing 47 neighborhoods to the total 91 features. In the MGWR, the percentage of people 85 years or older operates at a global scale with 91 neighbors. So the size increased from 47 to 91. The percentage of people living alone operates at a regional scale with 39 neighbors, and the percentage of green space and percentage of unemployed individuals are both operating at a local scale with 30 neighbors each. The last two tables we can see are the optimal bandwidth search history and bandwidth statistic summary. The optimal bandwidth and search history section displays the search history of potential optimal bandwidths along with the AIC values for each of the tested values. The tool then adjusts the bandwidth for each of the variables on each iteration and estimates a new AIC value. As the iterations proceed, the AIC value decreases until a stable it either stabilizes or increases. We can see for this model, it required three iterations to find the optimal bandwidth. And then finally, in the bandwidth statistic summary, we can see a summary of the values that were used to test whether each explanatory variable is statistically significant in the local model. These values are used to create the fields related to statistical significance for each of the explanatory variables in the output feature. Now that we have an understanding of some of the messaging that we're seeing in this model, we can take a look at the results on the map. What you get added to your map is the group layer with the name of the feature. And then when you look inside that layer, there's a number of uh, different layers here with the standard residuals, a uh, number of charts, significance values and coefficients for each of your individual variables are here as well. The first thing we can see is the standardized residuals map that's been added here. This is the raw residuals divided by an estimate of the standard deviation of residuals, so it's a measure of the strength of difference between observed and expected variables. We can look at the three different tables that are included in the output. We have the relationship between variables, which shows us a scatter plot of the relationship across each of the variables included to help us identify multicollinearity, just to make sure that we don't have any 
sort of false positives in our model. It looks like there's a bit of a relationship here between individuals 85 and older and people living alone or persons living alone. So just something to be aware of with our model might be something we want to keep our eyes on as a possibility for multicollinearity happening. Then we have the distribution of standardized residuals showing us a distribution of our data. Ideally, your standardized residuals should be normally distributed with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Our distribution here is actually a bit skewed right. We can see the tail happening here on the right side. Our mean is just slightly off of zero. So it's definitely not a perfect distribution. It's very close, but we do have some sort of outliers that are skewing the results that we're seeing in our, in our model here. And then finally, we have the standardized residuals versus predicted values. This is scatter plot that shows the standardized residuals and their corresponding predicted values. The plot should look pretty random with no patterns or trends. And if we turn on the best fit line, we can see that there is a it looks like there's a slight trend in our data. It's fairly random, but ideally we do want to see a straight line across the center here at the one. So we do have a little bit of a trend in the data. So again, our model is not exactly perfect. There is definitely some things that could be improved, but these are just the outputs that we see when we use this tool. And you can rerun your model and make sure that you have the best fitting data and everything is looking correct. So let's take the standard residuals, turn them off, and take a look at the actual results for each of our individual variables. The first result we can see here is the total population 85 and older. As we saw in the table, we can see this is a global variable. It's the same across the entire city of Montreal. There's no variability. All of the results that we're seeing are significant. There's no hatch marking, and they're all in the sort of stronger positive. They're not in the extremely high, but there is a strong positive value. This indicates that in areas where we're seeing higher numbers of individuals over 85, we're also seeing a corresponding higher number of deaths due to heat-related illnesses. So from the model, what we're seeing here is that there does appear to be a significant positive relationship between these two variables, and it's uniform across the entire city because it was it was identified as a global variable in our data set. We can turn these layers off and take a look at our next set of variables. Our next explanatory variable was the households, individuals living alone, and this time we do have some insignificant values. Anywhere where there's the hatch marking is considered to be an insignificant relationship between the variables and where here we also see that there is an area of the orange positive we also have an area of the or the purple negative what this shows us is that on the eastern side of the city we're seeing a positive relationship where there are more people living alone we're also seeing higher numbers of deaths due to heat related illness Although on the opposite side here, we have the negative relationship. So in this area where people are living alone, we're actually seeing a lower number of uh, deaths due to heat related illness. So in this area, people living alone might be something that we consider uh, a vulnerability, whereas on the other side of the city, that's the opposite is true. And people living alone in those areas are less of a concern. We can look at all of the different values that we have, the different variables. This is for green space. Um, as you can see, green space is fairly insignificant throughout the entire city. There's only one neighborhood where we have significance. And in this area, it's a stronger negative relationship. So in this neighborhood where there's increased green space, we're seeing a decrease in the level of deaths due to heat related illness. Although it's not a significant variable for most of the community. So it is probably less important in your planning for mitigating heat illnesses. And here we can see our last variable, the unemployed individuals or individuals not participating in the labor force. Um, and again, we have a lot of areas of insignificant with this variable. However, anywhere there is significance, we're seeing that orange color again, indicating a stronger positive relationship. So where higher levels of unemployment are seen, we're also seeing higher numbers of deaths due to heat related illness. Let's go ahead and take a look at our results that we would have seen if we had run the GWR for this same data set. So right now, looking at our unemployed rates, let's open up the GWR map I've made previously, and we can compare them to each other here. We can see right away that we have very different results if you have run in an MGWR versus a GWR. We can see that there are larger areas of insignificance and where there are significant neighborhoods or relationships that are significant, 
they're not as strong as they were with the MTWR. So we're seeing that there may not be as much of a positive relationship between individuals who are unemployed and higher rates of deaths due to heat related illness. We can take a look at our individuals who are 85 and older and compare those values as well. So we'll get those turned back on. If we compare that to our 85 and over population, again, we're seeing very different results. Like we know already, the MGWR is treating this as a global variable. So it's gonna be uniform across the entire city. That's not the case with the GWR. It's using those 47 neighborhood size for all of the variables. And as a result, you get a completely different looking map. You're seeing many areas of insignificant relationship and a lot of varying color. So positive and negative relationships showing definitely some areas where there's an even stronger positive relationship than we see with the MGWR, but it's not showing us that same result for across the entire city. So if you're using this model, you might identify a positive relationship only in some neighborhoods and only provide outreach to the elderly population in those areas instead of doing it uniformly across the city. It just gives you an example of why it's important to make sure you're using the model that fits best for the data you're working with in order to get the most accurate results because you can see very different results if you're using one that may not work for you. So based off of the information that we can see with this, we know that our model isn't perfect, but just as a preliminary result, we know that we're seeing a strong positive relationship between elderly populations increasing around the same places that we're seeing higher death rates due to heat related illness. We're also seeing a lot of areas where there's a positive relationship between individuals who are living alone or who are unemployed. And again, seeing um, higher levels of those values associated with higher levels of death due to heat related illness. Based on our findings, we can make the decision that in areas where there is that significant relationship and there are high values for those variables, we might want to contribute a little bit more of our resources towards heat mitigation efforts to make sure that we're most effectively helping the population and using our resources. Based on that information, I was able to pull out the neighborhoods that are the most impacted so we can get those up on here. And these are the neighborhoods that I found where we're seeing high levels of individuals who are living alone in those significant areas. We're seeing high levels of individuals who are unemployed in, again, a significant area and high levels of individuals over 85 where throughout the city that is significant. So if I'm working on mitigating heat, those are the areas I would want to focus on. And that's how the MGWR can help you make those decisions to best service your community. Hopefully you learned a little something about how this tool works today and maybe answer some questions about what this does and how it can work with your data. Again, I definitely recommend that you reference the resources provided by Esri. There's a lot of great sources on this that I've included below that you can help you further understand your analysis and make sure you're using the tool in a way that works best for you. Thank you for watching today. And as always, happy mapping.